a lot of great basketball on the lore between these two and the second time getting together today. Quickly off the tip, the Explorers with the basketball, and no question about it, they like to take a ton of threes, averaging 210 coming in, and they maintain possession. That was one of the key areas, defending the arc for Jose Fernandez and coming away the rebound, making her first collegiate start is Daniela Gonzalez. Yeah, for the South Florida team, defending the perimeter today, that's going to be critical. They're averaging some of the highest attempt numbers in the NCAA for three-pointers. Here's another. Second chance opportunity once again for the Explorers. Good movement of the basketball. They try to cut it inside. Jacob's shot is off. Here's Brito, who's getting the start today, as Sammy Puises was unable to practice yesterday. She is dressed and on the sidelines for the Bulls this afternoon. But Brito moving into Puises' position, and Gonzalez getting the start. There's Ariel Wilson in the backcourt. Yeah, Carla Brito, the freshman out of Spain. She's young, but she has so much extensive international experience, which is a huge asset for Coach Fernandez's team. Wilson has it taken away. Mass Antonio doesn't have numbers going up against Chineke and can't get it to fall. Gonzalez with the board. Coming off a nine-point performance. Think Mengiato with back-to-back -back hoops for USF. Boy, I love her mid-range shot. The transfer into Memphis for them. Second of the incident in boards, but also great offensively as well. Leads the conference in top 25 in field goals as well. You can see why. She has great creativity for South Florida. Double-double machine for USF. Averaging double-double on the season. Coming away with her rebound there and uh, coming into this game. 49 offensive rebounds. We'll be keeping an eye on that today as the Bulls look to have second chance opportunities. But they'd rather take it to the bucket. The rebound margin in the negatives for LaSalle. So that's an area they got to clean up today and execute. Gonzalez, 13th opportunity on the season. Bulls looking to deny and they do deny the backdoor cut here's Brito little hesitation step uses the body and gets the ball to drain through six nothing USF Haynes gives it back up to Connolly and a nice job in attacking the bucket and an opportunity here for a three-point play coming off a career game against UMIS now she's doing it again here tough to the bucket off the glass fighting up in the paint that was against gonzalez another freshman freshman on freshman beneath the bucket and she wins the battle and gets the free throws now lasalle's got to take advantage and they can't do it yeah jose fernandez he mentioned that after the marshall game is that was one of the big headlines for them is getting her back and getting her healthy adds a, another wrinkle for this group knocking it down priscilla williams also back into the game for usf out of the timeout has started to find some rhythm here. Another asset against yep. Marshall came off the bench with eight points. The freshman out of Houston, first three of the day for either team. Season high for Priscilla. Got lost there, a little bit of a makeup mix up defensively, and Connolly finds the back door on the cut to the hoop. And, and suddenly it's 9 4. Creating those opportunities for LaSalle, that's important. It's not falling from the outside right now. So, what do you do? You have to move the chess pieces around. Explorers trying to extend this zone out as USF pulls him away from the hoop. And Williams from the opposite side with the three. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Priscilla Williams back to back with the three balls. She's found her groove. South Florida, they've got a hot hand. They're going to feed it. And the answer at the opposite end is Crawford. Maybe trying to add a little bit more from the perimeter and keep building on this lead. Gonzalez has been working for that three ball. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. A fast first quarter of play. And jacking it at the opposite end is Spruill. Chineke shot clock winding down. Defense, defense. 
Macintonio. Brito. They've got time. Little half court action. They don't get it off. And that will end the first quarter of play. And they're exploring to try and find the lead here. It was, it was a pretty good job to hang around with South Florida and good rebounding. They did some of the fundamentals well in that first. Ball stripped away from Fenkem Mengiadu. Amy Jacobs thought about it. Macintonio trying to work off of the screen. Has it, gets it from three. Brito trying to find some open space here. Kicks it back out. She's got to let it go. Three seconds. And a foul called on the floor. Made South Florida work for it today. That's Jacobs' first foul as Fanka Mangiato working hard. That's her 50th offensive board of the season. Gets her to the free throw line. What she does, it's dynamic. And you see her field goals as well, well above 50%. Freshman from Spain. Fanka Mangiato with two big buckets there. Two-point lead for the Bulls. That perimeter defense, just a step inside for Mia Jacobs. And a walk down memory lane for Elena Chenecke. Inside the arc on both ends on that sequence. Brito. A prayer keeps it alive for the Bulls. Chineke from deep. And Elena Chineke lighting it up. Jacobs. Did she get away with it? No, she did not. Asensio with the kick to Chineke from three. Look good on that. Did they build some chemistry during that extra workout? I'd say so, because it's showing here in the second <laughs> quarter. Nice closeout by the Explorers, but good read. And Frank Mengiadu with the bucket. And that forces LaSalle into a timeout here with a 10-0 run. Getting some valuable minutes here and... Working with Chineke there, can't get it to roll, but offensive rebound. Franca Mengiato gets the roll in with the quintet on the floor. And it the combinations vary. Right. And, and as a coach, you're looking for that five, right, that are going to click game to game. Sometimes it's about matchups. It's what you're being given. And finding those right five and going on runs like this it can help you win games. The Explorers, who usually work with that outside ball as USF tries to work quickly. Because it, we mentioned this at the start of the game. They were really struggling, one for their first eight from beyond the arc. in South Florida finding those opportunities inside and players who can score for them underneath. Free throw shooting coming into this game. Got to keep an eye on Amy Jacobs. She's hanging around the free throw line. They look to hit a couple of those big threes from Priscilla Williams. Points at the end of practice yesterday. Let's not forget about today. And let's worry about San Diego when we get on the plane. Don't take LaSalle lightly. And the Explorers. Kind of gone back and forth a little bit. Went stretch back to 10. Ariel Williams back in the lineup. Or, Will, excuse me, Ariel Wilson in the lineup for USF. Along with Priscilla Williams, who just gets the basketball right there and answers with the three ball. A strong finish to the first half. I'm sure that's what he wants to see. And don't go too far away at halftime. We'll be speaking with Coach Fernandez on the state of the state of basketball here at USF switched hands may it cost her a bucket there minute to go Puises for three for one in the American in that department and now you get Sammy Puises with a three under her belt it's a great assist flying in along the baseline to get it to her good movement of the basketball and Lee how many times has LaSalle answered that yeah. big moment for South Florida it doesn't always have to be flashy but finding a way to respond quickly 
exactly as Barit. And the Explorers will hold for the last shot. Claire Jacobs, count it. Three point play is good, 2.6 seconds remain. Williams trying to get in the position. It will not count. Sal hung around in the first half. They've done enough. They need to make the adjustments in the second half, hit some threes to get right back in this with South Florida. They've got plenty of talent to do it. Stay steady, find a way. This group, they've got an opportunity in front of them. They've just got to go get it. Mountain McGillivray was telling us a little bit earlier in the day on how he appreciated the fact they had seven days off. It's the first time. And we've heard a lot of college coaches discuss this, Ryan, mm -hmm. since November, that they've actually been able to do one-on-one -on -one work with their players due to the impact of games back-to-back -back up to this point. Right. And it's having that time, that seven days to work on things. Fenka Mengiato leading all scorers with 12. Now four for five on the game from the line. <laughs> Janeke trying to work off of Fenka Mengiato. Little action. Pick and roll down low. As Dulce Fenka Mengiato sets the screen, goes inside, little pick and roll action. Just that extra touch, that extra beat finds the space. Doesn't get the free throw, but that's still a great play. Good hands. Janeke from three can't get it to fall. Rebounds rule. Good hands once again. Pressure in the backcourt. Brito with the hustle and a foul on the four. And then again, just hanging with it, pressing, staying aggressive. Brito comes around from behind, is able to get to the basketball. Shot clock at seven. Reset it to 20. Big lane for Brito. See Brito's numbers as a member of the under-18 Spanish national team. And Coach Fernandez and his staff telling us that, uh, like many international players... To, to perform at the level that all of these international athletes have done here, it's impressive. Now on Fenka Mengiato's 15th point of the game. Check that 17th of the game. And when Dulce Fenka Mengiato can finish... That's when she's most deadly. And it almost sounds obvious, but because she's such a good rebounder, that consistency in the scoring, it brings the attention back to her because she's such a threat. It can open up other things. Fenka Mengiato getting it done. Just a slight. Mass Antonio waiting for the offense to set up. Jacobs calling for it. A little bit of a mismatch there against Wilson. Working hard, getting inside. It's a much closer game than the scoreboard would indicate right yes. now, and that's just because of the plays LaSalle. Jacobs is not the player you want to be fought. Shooting close to 88% on the season. And making good on both, but answering at the end. That's Williams first. Senzio trying to get a wide base defensively. Coach McGilvery calling for a foul. Asensio playing some really tight defense there, and Coach McGilvery was livid to not get the foul call sooner. With what was going on on the sideline, but at least she get the two shots out of it. We thought that foul was a little bit more obvious. But neither team has scored in the last about two and a half minutes. I'll we'll continue here, but if you're LaSalle, when you get a low like this in South Florida, things slow down for them, you got to pounce. You can't let it kind of simmer like this. You have to take advantage. They finally break that drought here for LaSalle. they got to build on this. Well, I'm Antonio, one for two from the line. Important for Molly. She has struggled from the line this season, and 
Sensio with the turnover. Space in turnovers. Try to be around 12 or 13 in a game. They are at 12 right now. And right. we're going to have a technical foul distributed here. Coach McGilvery is going to pick up a tech. I think they after this personal foul on Fanka Mengiadu. So now we'll go down at the other end and shoot the technical. Puisis, who is perfect and tops in the American in this department. That's a broadcaster shanks if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> Both teams have been pretty cold here over the last three minutes. And it will continue. The luxury that both of these coaches have when you think about it, Ryan, they can go to their bench. Not a lot of coaches can say that around the country. Right. I mean, it just the wealth of talent on both these teams and utilized in different ways as LaSalle gets the bucket underneath. But you have the depth. In, in on LaSalle's side, it's all the experience they brought back from last year. South Florida, much of the same. Claire Jacobs with the garbage rebound and basket and the turnover. And now he put Mia Jacobs on the free throw line. Gonzalez. Daniela made her first collegiate start today. Under two minutes to go here in the third. Puisis from the corner and drains it for three. All of Sam Puisis' points from the field. From three-point land. And that's what her bread and butter was at Florida State. Their number down to 25%. That's a credit to South Florida, what they've done defensively. Take away the best asset they have. Puisis. Goes into Cheneke's hands. And that right there, too, the rebounding. That's been another reason for why South Florida has had this lead. Gonzalez with the turnaround. There's Fanka Mangiadu. Count it. I mean, we've seen this all day, Leah. Just time and time again. An opportunity to play that in a bit of a different environment. Absolutely. Uh, Fanka Mengiadu. Yeah, I, I mean, you got UMass picked unanimously at the top of that league. So they both these teams better for playing each other because you're scheduling tough. And, you know, I think it's really easy when you're... Wilson picks up her dribble, needs some help here. Here's Puisis coming back to the ball to swing it to Gonzalez. Steps through the double team and count it. At this time of year, we see that flash there. That is a plus-plus play underneath, and she got the bucket. And the answer and the response. Swing it across to Spruill, working on Puises. Might have been tipped just a little bit, kept alive. Cheneke, they recycle it to 20. Big step in. Yeah, you can point to that. It's great basketball. Alvarez rattles around. Fanka Mangiato, 40 seconds. Offensive rebounds for USF today. That was a big concern for the Explorers. And as the game has progressed here, Ryan... They certainly have chiseled into that area. Sam Puisis. <laughs> Not just the rebounding, but the three ball shooting from Sammy Puisis. She has been a problem that has grown as the second half has gone along for LaSalle. And it's kind of it's on both ends, right? You can be physical inside. You get the offensive boards. But South Florida, they've shot the three better as well. They so wanted to do a little bit better. I think they've done that today. Haynes goes to work off of Alvarez. Part of the game where if you're USF as well, you you don't want to see you know any loss and you start to get a little too confident, right? You want to keep focused, keep executing what you've been doing the entire game. 
Won't expect any let up from Jose Fernandez's group. Really worked hard in the offseason. You can see not an ounce of fat on her at all. She actually has to get... Oh, look, it's Sammy Puisas hitting a three again. That, that's been the story of the day. She's got five field goals. They're all three-pointers. She's doing what she does best for the Bulls. Pretty silent before we got to halftime. And a problem for opposing teams in the American Conference this year. And on her way to leading this team in scoring for the 11th time. Hartford will be switching to D3 soon. Dulce Fenka Mengiato, a solid game as she is out now with 26 points, 32 minutes of action. Williams from deep. She opened the three-point scoring. It looks like she's going to close it for South Florida. We talked so much about Puisis, but great day for Williams as well. She gets into double digits to finish it off. Four for six from three-point land. Fourth player in double figures with 12. One more run here for the Explorers. They do not get it off. The Bulls. With a commanding run down the stretch, Ryan, to pick up their 10th win of the season.